Hello everyone and welcome to the IP school. In this video, we'll see how we can execute interactive commands in Python through Parameco. Interactive commands are commands that require user input. For example, copy tftb flash, right? It's one interactive command. It would require you to provide IP address of the tftp server and the file names as well, right? So show version show run and all those kind of all those commands are basically you know standalone singly executable commands they don't really require you to provide any further input right so we'll see how we can execute those commands and really be able to you know provide all that input to the command as well so first of all let us you know uh, try the simple copy tftp flash command on the router itself All right, so when I execute this command, the first thing it asks me is the remote host name, right? So I'll type 1.1.1.1. That is the IP address of my loopback. And I have to type a source file name. I'll, like, I'll uh, type test.txt. And I have to give the destination file name. It can be different, it can be same. I'll just press enter. And it will start to access you know, the TFTP server and try to find this text file. As you know, this is a lab environment. I'm really running all these routers on Dynam uh, GNS, Dynamips. It really won't be able to, you know, access the TFTP server and, uh, you know, get the file. But this is something we would like to automate, right? We'll, we'll try to automate all this in Python through Parameco module, right? So let us get started. So first of all, what we need to do is we basically have to import Parameco. We al already we have already done it, but I'm gonna you know go through all the all the process of connecting to a device and all that once again, right? So basically, now what we need to do is after I've imported Parameco, I have to create a SSH client object, right? All right, once I've created a SSH client object, I can basically access the method of this particular object. So the, f so the first thing I'd like to do right now is set the missing host key policy, ssh.set, host key policy, right, to Parameco's auto add policy. All right, once we have done this, now any missing host keys will be automatically added to the host file. So if you don't know what is going on, you know, I really recommend you go back and watch the first video. In that we have already discussed all these basics, right? So after I've uh, set the, uh, the missing host key policy, what I want to do is I'll basically go ahead and connect to the device. Right, so the host name is 1.1.1.2. The port will be 22. The username is IP school and the password is Python. All right. So this statement will, you know, connect to this particular router. Oh, I just have to correct something here. Okay, so now what we basically have to do is we have to execute the command first of all, right? So we'll basically have to execute the copy tftp to flash command, right? So this is something we have to do. When this command is executed now, the command, the router will basically ask us for input. And how do we do that? In my earlier video, I told you that STDIN is used to send any data to the program, right? So what we'll do is basically we'll use STDIN 
a stream to basically send data to the program. So the first thing we want to do is we want to use std in dot write, right? So when we saw the output of the command, when we executed this particular command, the first thing it asked us was the name of the TFTP host, right? So what do we have to do with here is we have to specify the name of the TFTP host, fine? This is how we do it. And again, I have to send a new line character as well, fine? So basically it will write 1.1.1.1 on the command on the program terminal and then i have to s send a new line character that is essentially a carriage return right so that it it moves on to the next line to the next input so now what do we want to do is scdin dot flush right so all that data goes to the program now again after specifying a tftp host name what we have to do is to specify the file names right the source and the destination file names they can be you know same or they can be different so i'm going to do a little copy and paste here right so what we what we're doing is first we are spec first we are sending the host name when we send a slash n or a new line character then we really send those um, you know send those two values across and then we do a source dot source underscore txt dot uh, source underscore test dot txt file we send this file and we again send these values right so stdin dot write is the way you can really pass on those you know parameters whatever the command is asking you for you can you know uh, you can pass all those uh, user inputs so if you you know want to execute some other commands which really ask you yes no kind of questions you can do that you can send a yes and then a slash in or send a no as well right so this is how we do it now i want to go ahead and catch read the you know output as well okay now let me print it And the most important thing is, you know, don't forget to close the session, right? It's very important that you close the session. Now I'm going to save this file and I'm really going to, you know, execute this by pressing F5. So this program that I've written will be executed now. So the reason we have to wait here is because, you know, I really don't have a file uh, and, and this, you know, program won't be able to access the file. So what I've done is I've cleared the line so that we get the output fast. Now see what has happened. This is the output we got. So we executed the command and then we sent one slash one dot one dot one dot one and a slash n. So it moved to the next line. There we sent the source file name and we sent a slash n so it moved to the next line here we sent the destination file name we could have sent a slash n as well no need to specify you know it's not really mandatory you specify a destination file name as well and and then it started to access the tftp server so you see that we not only executed the command what we also done is you know provided all that input the command wanted right so this is you know this is all about executing interactive commands sometimes that this method won't work you know in our next video we'll see what other alternatives we have to execute inter interactive commands as well we'll check you know a, uh, a one different method basically and and it, it depends on which one works at given point of time the second method i prefer the second method because it it really works every time this one sometimes it doesn't work uh and in my second video, I, I'll probably share, you know, when it won't work and, uh, you know, what is the solution for that. So I hope uh, you have learned something out of this video. You have understood how, how do we execute interactive commands. And this has been helpful. If it, if it has been helpful, please 
you know, press the like button, subscribe to my channel for, for more information on Paramico Python network automation. Thank you so much for watching.